Hi guys, uh, so today we will discuss about generics concept in Java. It's a very important concept. So high level it gives you two advantages. One is code reusability and other is the compile time type safety. So in this video, we will see three examples. We will cover basics of generics. Then we will cover bound type parameters and then we will discuss quickly about wildcards. So let's see the first example. Here I have class legacy box. In this, I am using the object item and I have getter and setter of that object item. So in the main class, I will create the instance of legacy box and then inside the legacy box, I will set item as let's say one. Okay, because the item can be any object. So I am passing here as integer. So now if I want to get the value of this item, what I have to do, I have to simply say int value and legacy box dot get item. But if you see, so it is giving you the casting error because it is of object type and now we are trying to get the int value right so we will so we always have to put this casting thing when we are dealing with the legacy objects so now i will just print it here value okay so if i will run this code so it will run fine it will give me the value so let's say now i want to change the value from one to let's say youtube okay so in this case if you will see there is no compile time error so as a developer, I'm not able to catch any error in the compile time. But if I will run it, I will get a casting exception here in the runtime. So that means it is not a compile time type safety code. Okay. So that's why we use generics. So if I will convert this legacy box to generics box. So let's say generic box. So instead of object, we have to use here type. We usually denote it as capital T. So here, instead of object, I will say T item. So wherever I have used object, I will say T, okay, capital T. So here, now we have converted the legacy class to the gen generic class, okay. So now here, what I will do, I will say generic box. First, I will create for integer. Then if you see, we have created the generic box So we have created a generic box of integer type. So we are able to get the compile time error. So if I will put it one here, okay. And then I will get the item. So in this case, if you see, we don't need the additional casting because we have already mentioned the data type here. So the compiler already knows that it will be always integer type. So let's say if I want the generic box of the string time of the string type so i can simply do that here so generic box string and then i can say generic box string dot set item youtube and then i can print the value of that item so i can say this dot get item so if i will run this so i will get one and youtube so this is how you create generic class so here you can use generic class with any type Okay, so this was our first example. So now let's see the second example. So in the second example, we will discuss about bounded type parameter because sometimes you have to restrict the type based on your use case, right? It's not always that your logic will work with any type. So in the real world or in real use case, sometimes your logic will work on specific types. So that's where bounded type parameters come into picture. So we will see one example. Let's say I have integer list here and our problem statement is I want one method which will give us the maximum element of this list. Okay. So in this case, it will be 10. So here we will create one generic method which will find the maximum element of the list. So here the syntax will be public static or it can be non-static also. Then you will give the type parameter with the capital T. So this method will accept list of any type right so now if we write our logic to find the maximum so how it will look i will say t max is equal to list dot get zero okay so whatever is at zeroth index so i am setting it as a maximum now we have to write the loop for loop so our loop will start from one because we already fetch the element at zeroth index and then i will be less than our size uh, the, so i will be less than the list size so i will say list dot size and then i plus plus okay 
and then inside the list what i will do i will fetch the element i so i will say here t run element is equal to list dot get i so it will give me so first time so in this line list dot get zero we already got the value four and then in the loop what we have to do we will fetch these items one by one and compare it with the max so now we will use compare to method so if current element dot compare to max is greater than zero then we will set the max as the current element outside the loop we can just print the element max okay so this is our logic but if you see we are getting compile time error compared to because what the error message is saying that if you have to use compare to then your type should implement the comparable interface because compare to method belongs to comparable interface okay so that's why it is giving the compile time error because not all the types will be able to use compare to in this case bounded type parameter comes into picture where we have to restrict the type in this case we will use upper bounded parameter so what i will say here okay t extends let's say integer so t should be subclass of integer so as soon as i gave this condition you will see the error is gone here compile time error is gone and now if i will run that so now we will call that method find max and i will pass integer list so let's run the method you will see it is giving us accurate result this lower bounded type parameter also in that case you use super, super keyword so in this case that is not applicable now the, our second problem is let's say in future you want this method to work with double also double data type also okay so i will create a double list here and then i will say list of 4.1 8.2 2.3 be 100.3 and 698.8 okay so now if i will pass the double list to our method it will show the compile time error because t should extends integer but double is not a subclass of integer so what i will say here okay instead of integer now i want number okay so as soon as i give this condition our compile time error from this line is gone now but again compile time error is coming in the compare to method because again the same reason because your compiler is saying that okay your t is extending number but not all classes which are subclass of number should have comparable interface implementation in them okay that's why it is giving you right away the compile time error so in this case multiple bounded type parameter come into picture where we, we, we can give the multiple conditions so i will say okay my type should extend number and also comparable so as soon as i gave this condition which is multiple bounded type parameter and you will see this error is gone now compiler is sure that you will never get a runtime exception with this logic so now if i will run this code so you will see it is giving the result for integer also and it is giving the result for double also just to explain this example i used number and comparable but in real case it will work only with comparable also so in this example we learned about bounded type parameters where we have to restrict the type and then the bounded type parameters are of two types one is upper bounded and other is a lower bounded we used upper bounded here okay so now let's move to generics wildcard so we will cover it quickly so let's see print wildcard list method so here the method is taking list with the wildcard keyword which means it can accept list of any type but it treats the element as object rather than their original type so if you see here in the for each loop it is not because this means the type is unknown okay so that's why whatever type is coming here it will treat it as an object and it will print the item on the other hand so if we see this method which is generic method with type parameter so here it is not treating it as an object it is directly saying okay t item and it is printing the item here so in the main code if you see i have two list 
string and integer and one time i am using the print list method which is without wildcard but generic method and other one is print wildcard list and if i will run this both will get run but only main difference you always have to remember when you use wildcard it will always treat your type as object due to which this method is less type safe compared to our generic method with type parameter one important concept of generics is type eraser which can be asked in interview so what does that mean is like generic type information is only available to the compiler not your jvm okay what does that mean when your generic code is compiled into bytecode what it will do it will replace the generic types with object and it will also replace bounded types with the first bound class and it will insert the equivalent cast when retrieving generic object so this whole concept is known as type eraser where the generic type information is not available to jvm at runtime this is only at a compile time so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content